It's like a ghost story. In the future, we'll look back and say, had that one opportunity in life, instead of making 4,200 peer review academic studies every day and locking them up in Elsfer, Springer, and Wiley's Ivory Towers, where they don't benefit anybody but a handful of corporations with human rights. We could have changed it, if we're lucky enough to have that future. And Max Fuel, 20 days after the tsunami, they were out talking about how Max Fuel was 2 million times, 2 million times uh, more deadly than any other reactor on the planet. 2 million times. And so... Uh, Max fuel reactors are a lot bigger than a normal reactor on top of that. And so in comparison to Chernobyl, Max fuel is about 18 million times worse and toxic, deadly, just un unimaginably, inconceivably. And the video below about Chernobyl 3828, if you can sit through it, it's, uh, it's inside for the people that were in there with the shovels in their hands for 15 or 20 seconds and got their running, you know, we're, tw uh, we're 225 rem was what was your max dose you should get there ever for the rest of your life. And these people were running on top of uh, 800 or 8,000 and 12,000 with sneakers on. It's in that video below, it's documented from f photographers that went in there and shot all these pictures of all these people. They were sending like 10 people in at a time. They had 10 or 15, 20 seconds at a time to run in, pick up little tiny pieces because if you picked a big piece, it would the, the x-rays would just fry you right there on the spot and then everybody would have to step over your body. And so they had these little shovels and they, don't, they were giving them instructions 100 times a day, this group of 10 and 12 people, and they would just run as fast as they could and you would need something like um, probably 30 million people in comparison to the 600,000 to the million that done Chernobyl and changed it. You would need 10 and 20 and 30,000 at least to go into Fukushima trying to do that routine. And every robot they brought in there malfunctioned immediately. And they still, even today, can't build a robot that can go into those buildings that you're looking at. And they built a sarcophagus around that building show and tell. They've been fabricating videos about Unit 4. And you can't get in Unit 4 even if it is still standing. We don't know. You can't believe anything they said. All they've done is lie for almost a thousand days. And when you took into the equations of the models that they use for just two weeks dispersal into the oceans, not diluting, because that's the biggest fabrication. That's as bad as a banana as background radiation compared to an isotope that will kill you. It's like using airplane radiation to an isotope that will friggin' kill you and your loved ones and float around for a billion years and kill somebody else if somebody else comes back and visits this creature we've created now. Where the entire Pacific Ocean in two years is going to be dead. And not only that, it's going to produce these storms that are unimaginable. Because the ocean itself is a big battery now. It's the, literally exactly that, a battery. But a battery that keeps producing too much charge. So ultimately, you're going to end up with all the clouds that are full, which are now, are, are, are bringing all of this isotopes all over the place really fast. It's not just the currents. It's not this current that takes six years to kill the entire ocean in the model based upon a two-week dispersal when there's 300 to 400 tons of mitic going in there every day and that there's 4.3 billion gallons a day running over the three melted cores. And one of those, two of them, one and two, are nine times Chernobyl's each because they're not counting the pool on the, on the roof of it. Unit three was the MOX fuel, not counting the stuff on the roof of it. Not putting that into the equation. Do you see the rufter? Do you need somebody to say there's no rufter for you to look at that picture and say there's no rufter? Do you need that? Because I don't. And these were 10-story buildings. And so we don't even need them into the equation. We don't even need the max fuel into the equation. All you need is that unit one. 
That's nine times Chernobyl. That's actually three times bigger than Chernobyl. And Chernobyl is only a 30% meltdown. That's 100% nobody knows outside of the 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures coming out of this. And so the rods that are on the edge there that nobody can ever get into, you won't see anybody in there hanging there from scaffolds. You're not going to see anybody in there with torches. You're not going to see any kind of construction crew in there scratching their head with a measuring tape. For at least 100 years, they should be building a sarcophagus over that and then wait for the radiation to come down times 10. And maybe, just maybe, you can build a robot and go deal with that. Because what you hear about uh, is nothing. Is literally nothing. And Japan is, has closed down the internet. An absolute betrayal of humanity. Because we all, we're all in this together, whether we like it or not. Whether we like each other or not. For different life on this planet, uh, every species on this planet is in this together. This is every species. This is a... Um, Extinction event already for the Pacific Ocean, period. And it's an extinction event for anything within 500 kilometers of the coastline because of the typhoons that are going to be three and 400 miles an hour that are going to eat every tree and every rock and turn that into a projectile, just like we've seen in the Philippines, where that was 195 mile an hour winds. That was in 195 mile an hour of projectiles for hours that barbarized everything in that country inconceivable it shouldn't even be on this planet a hundred mile wide f4 tornadoes what tore up a tornado shouldn't be a quarter mile wide it should only go for three or four miles at best this creature just recently destroyed the philippines everything that's there's nothing left standing there think about canada having that happen or the united states have that happen everybody knocked down do you get it now and that the water that washed over, there's a study come out was radioactive, which is what I've been saying since that happened. But a study came out yesterday about that, last night. And then there was a study about how Japan is going to have 6,000 kilometers of solar panels on the moon. Not in my time, you're not, I can assure you. You're never ever getting off of this planet. And if you can put 6,000 kilometers of solar panels on the moon, you can take all that uranium and plutonium and strontium and the 1300 weaponized isotopes that you got down there got nothing to do with power. Got nothing to do with power. You don't need MOX fuel to make power. It doesn't make power. There's no generator on the edge of that plant. That's what reactor 1s and 2s are for. Reactor 3 was weaponized making these exotic isotopes that they can use in uh, weapons that can destroy communities in laser weapons and stuff like that. That's exactly what that's for. And for the future space engines, which they're never getting off this planet on. We can assure you that. The 4,200 peer review academic studies that your loved ones produce every day, that your tax is paid for. That, that's 1.6 billion hours, man hours a year at 1,000 hours per academic study. Think of each academic study, three a minute, a thousand page academic study produced over three or four years by your universities, by your professors, by their students, by their laboratories that you paid for. You paid for the lights, you paid for the heat, and it's locked up. I'm yelling, I know. It's locked up in Elsewhere Springers and Wiley's Ivory Tower. Who the hell are these people that get the copyrights on our academic peer review studies? Because I'm sick of it. Every time I get, uh, I want to look up something, I'm blocked. I got to pay ten thousand, or a thousand, or five hundred, or fifty thousand bucks just to browse those sections. That our taxes paid for every year, thirty-five million dollars and billion in, in Canada it goes to Elsewhere Springer and Wiley's Academic Ivory Tower beyond a locked door. We need forty-two hundred peer-reviewed academic studies every day working on Fukushima till the end of time. If we, if that was a meteorite coming at us. Every university on this planet would be working on it, right? Well, it's a meteorite coming at us. It's worse than that. It's a meteorite that never goes away. That creates all these supercells. With, you know, even just at 200 mile, we'd be so lucky in the near future to have just 200 mile an hour winds full of projectiles. We'll be happy with that in the near future. I'm not, I won't be the least bit surprised to see a three or 400 mile an hour one show up any day now at all. Anywhere from here to Japan, at least, and Japan too. We don't know what happened to Japan. We don't know if those typhoons wiped out most of Japan. Nobody knows. Nobody can confirm that. Nobody can deny that. 
Nobody can debunk that. Because uh, Japan has one one thousand of one percent of the population on the internet. And they don't talk about Fukushima. At all. And then we have the propaganda machine from AP and writers trying to feed you the same story in every outlet you go to. You'll get the exact same story with the exact same picture and the same boring paragraph. And that's why you're here tonight. Because you're sick of that. And you want to get it. And I don't know if we'll ever get the true implications of what we... But we can easily look at what science says would happen in these environments. Like on other planets where they have these supercells, where they have these lightning storms that go from the ocean up to the clouds, but the clouds will light up in the future, in the very near future, in the Pacific Ocean, because they'll be full of isotopes. And if they're whacking that with the lasers or who knows what, we don't know what these creatures are capable We know what they're capable of. It. There's 5 million orphans in Afghanistan. There's 27,000 children dying every day, dysentery, diarrhea, and pneumonia, and Bill Gates cured a billion people from ever uh, getting polio, but there's only 600 people a year get polio. 27,000 children die every day, so we know what they're capable of. The GMO has no nutrition in it. Go look it up. You need a truckload of corn just to get the same amount of calcium in a single organic corn on the cob. You got to eat, I'm, not I'm talking a pickup truck, 480 pieces of corn to get the same amount of calcium. You need like 129 pieces of corn of GMO corn to get the same amount of potassium. And you need around 59 GMO corn to get the same amount of magnesium that's in a typical organic corn on the cob. Because they engineered the nutrients out of it. And then they engineered in glossophates, and, which are known carcinogens, which is the basis for uh, Agent Orange, nine years of chemtrailing Vietnam. We're a sick and demented society beyond imagination. We're a willing slave to our own self-destruction, our own self. We're killing ourselves anyway with the GMO. We're killing ourselves with the 65,000 unregulated chemicals every day that has invaded every aspect of your life. That's in your makeup, that's in your hair, that's in your products, in your clothing, that's in your materials, that's leaching out these nanoparticles, will get to the membrane of your lungs, to the membrane of your brain. And then your body will attack that. And you'll have tumors and stuff like that from that. The nanoparticle is the worst thing ever introduced besides nuclear on this planet. It's insidious how it works. It should never be loose in the wild, ever. They need to create technology like that anyway. They know that in order to deal with what's coming at us that they can't deny much longer. They can't deny a dead ocean within two years, see? You can't get away from that. And you can't deny the fact that the seagulls are dropping dirty bombs all the time now. It's better than getting hit by a seagull in 195 mile an hour winds, I could assure you. <laughs> or 300 miles an hour winds. That's common. It'll rip up the pavement. There'll be nothing left standing wherever it bangs. Just like the Philippines. No difference. That's why it existed. That's why that peer review study just came out about the radiation and updated that communities. Remember the boats that went up in those communities? That had at least a 35, 40 foot. Um, you know, even when it's empty, it needed 35 foot of water underneath it. I used to go down and inspect these holes. And so I used to always have to get them to turn off their sonars and everything else because I didn't want to get beat up underneath the boat and it's usually like an hour and a half job to swim under these boats and check all check the whole hole of the boat and so when I seen the boat sitting up there in the middle of a community I understood how much water it takes to drag those boats into those communities <coughs> and when I see the pictures of the Philippines with, every, with all those projectiles at 195 miles an hour and how it leveled everything and how bodies were found so many miles away it's, it's inconceivable. And see, like I say, an F4 tornado would only do things five and six miles. And so that was considered extraordinary. Well, you should see what traveled hundreds of miles in the Philippines. It'll blow you away. It did. Tractors. It's just amazing that anybody even survived that. And the true carnage might never be known for another year. There's so, much, so many people missing and just destroyed. It's like inconceivable that that's going to happen again and again and again right around the entire Pacific. So when is it, when are people finally going to admit that we got to do something smarter 
Are we just going to let this go until it goes in and wax Florida? Or Vancouver, Canada? Is that when you're going to finally say, oh, you know, that's a little odd. 300 mile an hour winds. Knock down every building. Never seen that one before. Because most people will be dumbed down so much with the GMOs and this idiotic idiot tube. And then all the 65,000 chemicals they absorb into their body constantly. Like makeup is toxic. Your cleaners and your cupboards are toxic. That's toxic stuff. You're only allowed to have, you only, you only got that because of all the chemicals, the 65,000 chemicals were grandfathered in in 1981 when the Environmental Protection Agency hung up their shingle. They grandfathered in every chemical. They knew thousands of these were beyond toxics. You know, Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo, they had to change their formula last year because it was uh, carcinogenic. And it's, it's going to take quite a while because they make a lot of it and they got a big factory and they got a lot of people employed and then it's hard to find another ingredients to make it work. Well, just take it out anyway within time being, you would think, but no. It was like the vaccines or it was like that AIDS um, where, they, and where they, they had AIDS in Bayer's aspirin. And there was millions and millions of doses discovered that had the AIDS virus in the liquid aspirin. And you know what they done? They shipped it off to the third world countries rather than destroy it. And people in those countries like China, where the executives who done that, were actually executed. Nobody in America even got called out for it. The media doesn't want to um, doesn't want to distance themselves by you know asking a hardball question. They might not come back on their show anymore. Forget about journalism, the, the fabrication. The only time you see journalism is in the Hollywood movie. That's it. It's the only time you see uh, ethical journalism. And it's funny, they can't even say it with a straight face in a movie, see? Look, we, we, can't, we can't just walk away from what we know is coming at us and going to destroy so many lives every day that the fable uh, stays there. And they can't hide it much longer because of the, the ocean is going to die and it's going to have some already supercell storms, one or the other, in the next two years. One of them is going to blow the lid off this. They can't hold it in much longer, see? People are waking up at a big rate and, and they understand things. And all they had to do was open the pearly gates and let everybody come in and try to help them, but they won't let anybody go in there. And so they created this themselves. And so you got to make sure they don't get off the planet in the future because they're going to destroy at least 90, 95% of the species on this planet. And it's not the radiation that mutates, see? You'll be lucky. You'll be so, so, so lucky. If the radiation just mutates things wherever you live, you'll be so lucky. That fish are going around with eight always, you'll be happy. You'll be like, that's pretty cool, I can live with that. Compared to what's coming to a lot of places. Because no one's getting an opportunity to deal with this. Who knows which university student can come up with a solution? I guarantee you it can happen. Particularly if it was a big meteorite coming at you and gonna, gonna just destroy your country or destroy your planet. If there was a 30 mile wide asteroid, look at the ice sign, how everybody right now, every video out there, I could have made a video and jumped on that wave if I wanted to, and I should have probably. Because that's the kind of asshole I actually am, is where I will use another subject to get this subject out there and give it some more attention. In fact, I might just start doing that. Yes, indeed. Lady Gaga. Next time she hits the news, I'll come out with a Lady Gaga. Don't hate on me too much because I'm up to no good, you can be sure if you see that happening. Because that's how I roll, okay, dog? That's how I roll right now. I don't give a shit about these creatures. If I can use them to pump it out there, wake up more people, force their hands, and get all the institutions on the planet to go to work on the meteorite called Fukushima that's coming in every way possible because the troposphere, the stratosphere, through all the thousands of miles of clouds that form every day on the ocean and lug it all the way over here earlier than anybody ever wants anything to do with it. And how that, the, the, as we kill off the ocean, the migratory animals can't migratory anymore, like the birds and that, right? Or the mammals, they can't survive in that environment. There's no oxygen and it's radioactive. Radioactive means you stick your hand in it or you get burns within, like you can't undo those types of burns. These are vicious. And because they're flushing it out into the Pacific Ocean and how it aggregates with things so readily and how the oceans have been inundated with 90,000 
uh, container ships. And I want you to think about that because that's so important uh, and I don't bring it up enough. Is that 90,000 container ships and these ships, these are the ones with the 5,000 say containers on it, transport truck, small containers on it. Yeah? Okay, so there's 90,000 of those types of ships and they burn bunker fuel. And bunker fuel is what's left over from the processing of fuel, of petroleum products. And it's supposed to go to a nuclear or a waste, a toxic waste site at around 1800 bucks a ton. And so what they came up with a lot were these big ocean-going vessels that are bringing gadgets back and forth you can burn that. Now the problem with it is it's not very efficient at all. It's like beyond inefficient actually. And it should be on a toxic waste site. But there's 90,000 of those ships out there. And the resulting carnage that that creates is the equivalent of about 42 trillion people on this planet every day. And so what that, like 16 of them produces more pollution than all the cars on the planet. One of them produces more pollution than all the cars in Canada, all the cars in New Zealand, automobiles in Australia combined, 50 million cars, vehicles. One container ship every single day is producing that. The animosity equivalent of. So 16 produces more pollution. Now, on a good side, because that's in the Pacific Ocean, and it, it burns very poorly, so you got all these particulates, unfortunately go, and fortunately go up into the atmosphere and into the troposphere and into the stratosphere. Bear with me. But it also acid uh, causes the oceans to be acidic, right? But they blame it on us and our tin cans and our pop bottles and our little four-cylinder beaters compared to these 90,000 container ships that are on the ocean producing the same amount of pollution as 42 trillion people on this planet every day. So bear with me, because this is important. I said that twice, I know. Because it's twice as important, and I'm glad I remembered to bring that into the conversation is all. And so I want to get, make sure I keep everything straight for you. And so what happens is uh, radiation likes to aggregate to certain types of particles. And because radiation, the isotopes and the gammas and the betas and all this is, is energy, then the particulates, the acidity of the ocean from the 90,000 ships to 42 trillion people on this planet every day, hopefully is aggregating a lot of that and probably has been. Not probably, is. But on a stranger note is that when you combine these unknowns with a known unknown, you might end up with a concoction much like uh, when you're spraying salt waters on the spent fuel uh, or the melted cores, you create a concoction of binding in the atomic uh, neutron atom sizes where they're able to contain a uranium or a um, uh, uh, plutonium or strontium, etc., etc., and then it becomes its own little nuclear engine. And then you need um, to think about how do you get something to be two million times more deadly? How do you how do you work that one out? Why would you work that one out? First off, it's got nothing to do with making power, but how did you get there? How did you get that to be two billion times? Uh, two million times more deadly than Mox fuel. See, and so that's the equation you really gotta research yourselves in order to comprehend what just number three is all about. Not counting all all of the missing full, uh, fuel pools above it, but just to keep it in the context of what we're actually talking about, two million times more deadly. That's not me, okay? That's the professionals out right after the first couple of months, and there was mainstream media all over the place, and of course they gave up on that, but they still mention it once in a while. And it's missing. The fuel, uh, the, the fuel Poles above it are missing too. But just unit one is nine times Chernobyl. It's a 100% meltdown. Chernobyl is a 30% meltdown. They went through a million people. Right? Serious stuff. So we need organization sense wise of people. We want 4,200 academic studies every day on this because if it was a meteorite coming at us, we would have 4,200 peer review academic studies on that meteorite and how we're going to deal with it and the whole world will be packing their kids lunches and sending them to college to deal with it because it would have been a moral and ethical thing to do and instead we got people like me got to show up 
Someone like me has to show up and say it. It's frightening to me. It truly is. And I don't want the job, same as anybody else out there. They don't want that job either. They're not supposed to have it. The media was supposed to do it, but the media has never told you anything in your life. It's sold its soul to read a teleprompter and get a Twitter account, as I like to say, to be polite. And so the people, the, the, the media is meant to sell it to you, whatever they're told on the, print, on the teleprompter. And that's what they do all day, these little sound bites all day long on the teleprompter. And they sell it with a smile and a $5,000 suit with dirty underwear. And a, and a deep closet full of skeletons. They keep selling their soul all day. I, couldn't, I can't sell my soul like that. I can't do that. Somebody can't come and offer me money. Somebody can't threaten me and change me. That's not going to happen. That can't happen. I don't live that way. I don't think that way. I can't act that way. That's something that I've never done before and I have no intentions. I, I, I'm not going to have that as my legacy. And so everything I say is because I vetted it and everybody else has vetted it before, but then I vetted it myself because I don't read Fox. I go read the academic studies from Harvard and Yale and Berkeley and MIT and Stanford and Oxford and every scholar on the planet to make sure I actually got another narrative. Because I, the other stuff is still boring. At least when you read these academic journals, you have to go look up words to find out what the hell they mean and try to get them back into context. Because you're trying. I'm not saying I'm the scholar. I'm just saying I know all the scholars and I admire them. And I thrive on them. And that I'm worried that in the future we won't have that. And so we have to learn what we can learn now before something bad happens where this goes the wrong way instead of the right way where we say, okay, there's a meteorite coming at us, let's deal with it. Otherwise we might have a whole country get destroyed like the Philippines. And so now that we pass that stage and we realize how many lies they truly told us and how hideous it really truly is and the fact that Mox fuel is missing and getting flushed out into the ocean all day every day, not counting the rainstorms and the snowstorms enhancing that because of all the rods that are in the topsoil all over that site, which is one of the backup plans. And that, that, that country is a hostage, that they are all victims to this creature that wasn't making power, was making a military industrial machine, weapon. It just won't give it up. And now it killed up our whole planet. We gave up the planet so it can try. They should have like waited and got a planet and go try this nuclear weapons out, nuclear plants out on another planet. Never should have tried it on Earth. They knew better. There's no reason for that to be done on Earth. They knew that. Those people, are some of them are still alive about that. And they prospered because of that. And I'm not saying which they should be they shouldn't be hanged in the streets because they knew better and they prospered off it and they know what's going on here and they kept silent and they kept silent their whole freaking lives and the media still puts them up there. And so we can't, we can no longer uh, wait for the media to tell people and push this ethically in the right direction of let's take all of our institutions and find out how to have a real civilization for the last remaining part of our civilization we come together as a civilization and we deal with what we got to deal with because we got no wiggle room left. The death plumes that have traveled across that ocean in just a matter of three days because of the jet streams traveling at 100 miles an hour, which is nothing. We'll still reach here in three days. And they don't, these plumes are real, right? That's the whole thing, you know. If it was a meteorite coming at us, I wouldn't have to make this video, would I? See? But because they're hiding away the, the, the army of meteorites that are coming at us from every single direction and of, uh, every aspect of our lives, and including the troposphere and the stratosphere for many years, from the constant testing, and not, not just testing, because that's a different isotope. It's just like, look at all the bullets, 5.5 million bullets a month in Iraq. Most of that was depleted uranium from, from uh, McAllister's bomb manufacturer in Oklahoma. That's dirty bombs. Every one of those bullets is a dirty bomb. And so every time you hear the media talking about dirty bombs, think of the irony where you went in other people's countries and fired millions. Just a month, 5.5 million 
rounds a month. Most of that is depleted uranium rounds. That's all McAllister makes. There's four of those bomb manufacturers in the United States trying to get rid of a, bi a billion tons of uh, yellow cake. And that's what you're doing with it. Do you think that's not going to show back up in your own country? All the nuclear plants are leaking into the ocean on purpose. They build pipes out there because the, the, they don't want to release them to the community because you might kill a bunch of people in the community. You won't want to, you know, if Chernobyl had happened in the capital, their capital wouldn't exist today. Right? There'd be nobody living there. It'd be a totally empty capital. See? And that could happen to you. That could happen. But does that really happen in Japan? Japan is a wasteland. It's a complete wasteland. You're supposed to dig up all of Japan and put it on a nuclear waste site by the nuclear regula re regulations. All the stories are there where all the radiation was found, which means the entire country is completely It's polluted. Of course it is. The typhoons are picking it up and spreading it everywhere. And it'll do that for a billion years. It ain't going to stop. All those isotopes releasing all that. These particles are everywhere. The big particles. The x-rays. The neutrons. There were 13 neutrons beams absorbed. Uh, constantly, this kind of information is keep coming at you. So what do you need? You don't need nothing. I'm just saying it because you're here. I'm here. I'm just saying we need those 4,200 academic scientific journals every day trying to go after this meteorite called Fukushima. We can't wait any longer. We just can't wait any longer. The evidence is just stacked. Nobody needs any more evidence. Nobody needs it. Let me make that point. That we don't need any evidence. It's there. It's everywhere. It's all through the media now. There's a history of it almost a thousand days. People have covered it extensively. Almost every professor on this planet has spoken out. And your media stabs you in the back every single day. Just stabbing you. Stabbing you in the back every day. Cowards! When you, what's enough? When California's beer because of a typhoon or a hurricane that had 200 mile wide eye and was traveling at three and 400 mile an hour winds and all these politicians are dead and all the celebrities are dead. Will you finally get it then? Will you finally admit it then? Probably not. No. Just a regular old storm. You should get them like that a couple hundred years ago. You don't know nothing, mister. No, because 4,200 peer review academic studies we paid for are locked up every day. We can't even solve our own problems because you keep locking up all that secrets, all the information. A lot of terrorists will get it and use it. Take away your fucking freedom. But you ain't got nothing. You got no freedom. You're a slave beyond imagination. You have no concept of how far down the rabbit hole we truly are. If you think about anything right now, except to, you know, take care of that meteorite that's coming at us. Because there's a whole bunch of them. And we need everything on the planet working on that, period. Or there ain't going to be a planet to worry about. As it stands now, it's destroyed. You can't just kill a Pacific Ocean and expect it to stop there. It don't respect no borders. It don't respect any kind of... It's uh, the most indiscriminate thing you can ever imagine. The most vicious, violent, nightmarish thing. I would rather be invaded by aliens with lasers shooting at us. At least we had a chance. At least we would throw rocks. At least we could have that satisfaction before we, they took us down. At least we could try, see, before they, they take us out. If you don't know, you can't... If you don't even try, how can you stop it? You're just looking up at that meteorite right coming at you and you just won't... Just... What's on Fox? What's on CNN? What's on... See, I'm gone back 35 years turning the dial on the TV. I grew up in a time when there was no TV. There was no radio. And that if you didn't shoot it, you didn't eat. And there was no such thing as candy bars. There was berries in your meat. You didn't eat unless you went and got it yourself. And everybody's become so complacent and they're stuffed now with all that GMO. They can't stop it. They can't turn it off. They're addicted to it. It addicts your brain. It takes over your body, your functions. And not only that, it changes you genetically. It makes you susceptible to the radiations because it makes you weak. It already creates the very habitat for the radiation itself to destroy you, to finish you off, to make you liquidate all your assets at the very end of it, just to try to get another couple of weeks of 
GMO supplements or GMO pharmaceuticals and you give your babies GMO baby food and you give your pets GMO with no nutrients and toxins engineered into it. So you're being set up. And then 65,000 unregulated chemicals, you're being set up. For every, you're, you're just susceptible to everything and anything. And just think about that one where there's 2,000 CDC centers right across America. So if you get one of these 200 mile wide that try, you know, F4, F5 tornadoes cruising through and wrecking all of these places for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of miles, that's coming. You can guarantee you can't turn that off if you don't try. And you can do it because you created it so you can, you can turn it off. If you created it, you can deal with it, but you got to try. The, 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 this peer review studies actually probably exist of how to deal with that. And they lock up 4,200 every day that are published for fluff, for corporations, so they can get into space and leave us all here like the uh, movies, like the Hollywood projections. It's just a, it's not a game. It's, it's not nonsense. It's not fables, unfortunately, sadly, pathetically. What a, what a stupid time to be alive that we got to try to force this out into the public so that that beat meteorite, at least we tried to stop the meteorite before it smacked into us. Japan's idea of uh, doing that up there on the moon, putting 6,000 kilometers of arrays up there so they can move all their prefab buildings up there so they can get off this planet too. They probably done it to us on purpose because they never told us, they never they won't let anybody in to help them. You know, you have to wonder... The, not Japan, but the people that are down there. Why, you know, why? We know there's going to be carnage down there. We, we get that. We've seen that from the tsunami. There's places that are radiated. You still can't get the bodies. We get that. So why not let us in there and deal with it and so the whole world can go to work on it? Because we will. There's nothing motivates the human species any more than an extinction-level event. Period. And we have reached that plateau of all of our generations where we are actually capable of destroying ourselves and we are just as capable of surviving relatively intact but you're going to kill so you're going to kill the entire pacific ocean it's dead you can't change that you can cut it off right now but that plume that's coming out is going to fill up the ocean with just two weeks hemorrhaging not counting the numbers we're talking about the real numbers that finally came out so when is enough going to be enough? When is enough going to be enough? I say that point is getting close. And that's not what it should be. It should be 4,200 academic peer review studies published every day that gives us hope. Because we need hope. Not the fear mongering that's coming. We need the hope that the world has put its back to the wall for one last push against something that can extinct the entire species on this planet. Like I said before, it wouldn't surprise me if they're doing it on purpose, and so the species that are left over are acclimated to radiation and they could actually travel in the space, because we can't, right? We can't travel in space without big tumors and destroying you. Males can't even go into space, they go blind. But if you had a, a, a generations of people born acclimating to very strong radiation, you might be able to come up with a few species and take along animals and everything else and go off to another planet. Very well might be able to do that. In fact, that's what you would expect them to do if they were going to try to do that. Because we, as a species, cannot deal with that type of radiation that's on our planet right now. This is not indigenous to Earth. 38 minutes. I'm sorry. It's just like every friggin' night, three nights in a row now. I sit here and yell at myself. That's all I'm doing. I'm yelling at myself the entire friggin' time. I know I am. Yeah, I'm just yelling at myself. I do that all day. Just to try to get me to come up with something different. Of You know, if 4,200 peer review academic studies every day going to work on this, but everybody with that urgency, with that knowledge that you can't deny when you look up and you see it coming at you, right, that motivates you. I can guarantee you the Philippine people that don't have a word for rude that apologize in a car accident even though they, 
didn't create it because that's their culture. There's two billion people online. The other five billion have no idea of this narrative or anything that we're talking about. You're the fortunate ones. You're the very blessed, the very few. Make no mistake about it. That have went down that road and realized and have made a determination. But most people don't get that opportunity. Most people don't have that comfort. Most people will be terrorized only at the last minute and in the wrong, without any hope, like the Philippines, without any chance, without any concept. And they probably still don't because they're cut off from the world and always have been. But it's, it's, it's up to the, the people that do have that to try anyway to inform people, to give them the opportunity. When Japan's tsunami happened, I put out a video and I warned people that if you got loved ones, dare to warn them. They just had a major earthquake and a tsunami is coming. It's not much. It might have been only a two or three minute warning if it did. If anybody did make that phone call because they seen the video and they weren't paying attention. That was just another way maybe they would get the message and they might make a, make a phone call to Japan and warn a loved one. Or they might be in Japan. Who knows? Because I have a lot of people from all over the world and certainly have some from Japan. And so that was the idea of that first video. The second video was about depleted uranium because I understood the plant was in updated with water. And so I made a video to explain to anybody that was listening, you know, my, my, what, deplete, what the depleted uranium meant to me in context and how scary this was all of a sudden. It wasn't as if the horror of that tsunami wasn't enough. I was broken hearted when I made that video. I remember that distinctly to this day. I'll never forget that moment that I scrambled. It was a terrible video, but I threw it out there in the hopes Somebody would just see the headline and scramble for their telephone and maybe save another life. And I do that every day. Because it's, you got no choice. Because the media won't and can't. And I'm scared that they will, sadly. It wouldn't be like that, though, if it was a meteorite. Because everybody else would be able to come out and say, look, you know, we're coming after it too and we're going to deal with it too. And you, you have this... Uh, we would come together for one last, for the only time in our life, in our history, as human species on this planet, we would come together for that one thing. We'd murder each other every day, but for this one extinction level event, we would all just drop our bigotry and our racism and our devoids, our paradigms, that we slip away and ignore the realities for one more day of ignoring the realities that you will never escape. Well, this one, you will never escape it. You can't escape it. And if it was a meteorite, we wouldn't have this conversation ever because everybody would be on ball trying to come up with fascinating ideas and concepts and everybody would buying telescopes to see what they can add to it. Because you know the countdown timer is on. You don't get a countdown timer with a 100 mile high typhoons that are Definitely knocking 235 miles an hour. Imagine something traveling in that wind at 235 miles an hour, how it wrecks the building and picks all that up too at the same time and picks up the next building. And all that is airborne particles, uh, projectiles for hundreds of miles. You know how you put your hand out the car window? You put your hand out your window there, it'll tore it off your arm immediately by the, by the stuff that's in that wind. And the future is much more of that. And so the urgency is very real because uh, that's real what happened to the Philippines, okay? That should never exist on this planet. It should only exist on Mars. On Mars. Folks, um, once again, I'm going to end up catching up on the comments after. It's been a long day. And it's how many days? I don't even know. I don't even care. 30, 29 whatever, so many days in a row, and that all day long, this, it's just more coming at me, and so why ain't, you know, why ain't we at least trying, is my question, you know, the ones that are here every night, understand what I'm saying, 
But the ones that are not here and can make a difference regularly and watch this, right? That's the question you have. You have to ask yourself all the questions I asked myself tonight. Because that's what I'm really doing here. I'm asking myself these questions of why. I got to be here. Why, why do I got to do this? Why does anybody else in the community out here got to do this? Why don't we have all the, the intelligent people organizing, pushing back properly? Because somebody doesn't want us to. Somebody doesn't want us to. Somebody wants this all to go the worst way possible. And it's not about money. It's about hideousness. It's about killing people. It's about population control and where whatever's left over will get them off this planet onto another planet and they'll take it from there and they'll take all those peer review academic studies with them to ensure that the next generation will be just drones and only their family members will rule those planets because otherwise they would be trying to save this planet and in order to save their futures so that, so we know that that's literally what they're up to is eventually force us to create the technology to get off the planet sooner than later. 45 minutes, I'm going to give it up. I'll say hi, i say goodbye to a few folks. Starlight, Irene and Rail, see I can't even pronounce that yet, so two nukes. Lori, hi, Nuber Magic, what's up dog? Always so happy to see you man. Um, Albert, Folks, there's links under my video. Video, hi, baby, mama. Kurt K. I should have come over earlier. I know. Moments, nothing more. I see Miss Milky. Hi, Miss Milky. Big smiles. We see Third Watch. Cucumber. We got some big names here. Lunar. Uh, Jester. James. Domine. Hey. I see. Uh, hi, baby, mama again. Um, yeah, I know, folks. I know. I'm going to read these comments after tomorrow morning. I think I'll wake up and I'll sit there and I'll, I'll smile. Hi, Jen. Once again, camshaft. Lori. Uh, hang on. Charles, hey. And I'm going to scroll down and say a few more. Hi, Bill. Dwayne, Robert, you guys are so awesome, folks. See, I'm starting to feel better already just looking over here. I'll probably read these again tonight. Just to wean me around. Hi, Quitty, Q U W E, can you pronounce it? Uh, I'm just going to scroll down before we give it up. No real magic. You got some good videos, man. You're awesome, but we really appreciate the things you do. They're all treasures, make no mistake about it. Uh, no, no GMOs. 33.3 DFG, I think it is. Hi, Daisy. Europrop, David. I'll come up to the top, say hi to anybody that showed up. Missing Sky. Yeah, thanks, Euro, Europrop. And everybody else, I'll, I'll read your comments after. I think I might do another Fukushima comedy show some in the next couple of days because I've been writing my own jokes this time. I'm going to get some soundtracks. Probably going to get in trouble. So that's all I can tell you right now. Going to get in trouble. <laughs> I look forward to it, actually. I look forward to the murderers in the comment section saying Fukushima is fine, killing more people every day. The PR firms that are they're murdering people and all the. We say goodnight to them too, and hopefully they come to their senses and come out as whistleblowers and tell the truth about what you're doing, how you're they're murdering people in the comment section against your will, how you realize how evil that is. And. Uh, Tomorrow night, we should talk about how they're going to grow food on the moon by 2015. Gee, I wonder what's to rush. <laughs> they're going to make special... I don't know. It's pretty crazy. That was the headline last night. The Americans are going to grow food on the moon by 2015. Look up the headline. And then you got the Japanese are putting all those arrays up there. 
right? You should bring all that plutonium up there first. But hey, that's just me. Take care, folks. I'll see the comments after, and uh, we'll catch you again tomorrow night, live, of course, and roaring. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.